let me give you an important point. Let us see what happens when uh, alpha particle is emitted or beta particle is emitted. Okay. Uh, see when uranium 92 238 emits an alpha particle. The alpha particle is nothing but helium 24. So 92 minus 2. Okay. Nothing but 90, and that is thorium. Similarly, 238 minus 4. Nothing but 234. So we get thorium 90, 234. Okay. If you look at the relation between these two, you know, these two are isodiaphorous to each other. Okay. That means when a nuclide emits an alpha particle, its isodiaphoric form. Okay. See when a beta particle is emitted. Now when thorium emits a beta particle, look at what happens. 90 minus half minus 1. So we get something with something with atomic number 91. That is protactinium. The mass number does not change. 234 minus 0. So we get protactinium 91, 234. Now, these two are isobars to each other. Right? That means when a nuclide emits a beta particle, we get the isobar of it. Let us take another beta. Here we get atomic number 92, 91 minus half minus 1. Then of course this is 2 thirds. See when these two are isobars to each other, because a beta particle is what we have taken now, looking at the first one and the last one, these two are isotopes to each other. That means when one alpha and two beta particles are emitted in succession, we get the isotope of that nuclide. Okay. Let me give that. Emission of alpha particle results in isodiaphor. Emission of beta particle results in isobar. Emission of one alpha and two beta particle in succession results in isotope. These are all very important. Okay.
Now it's group displacement law. This law tells us the position of the product element. When the parent element emits alpha, beta, or gamma ray. Let us check what happens with the alpha emission. Before going for that, let me tell you one thing. Supposing if you are starting with a radioactive element X, if suppose this emits alpha, beta, or gamma ray and forms Y, you know, this is called parent element and the one that is formed now is called product now when this product suppose if it disintegrates further Say to form Z. We call this daughter. The product element is called a daughter element if it further disintegrates. So again, this is called a product element, but if it further disintegrates, it is also called daughter element. So if further disintegrates, we call it daughter element. Okay. So this is how it goes on. We'll see that later. But for now, let us see what if alpha particle is emitted. Let me give you an example for this. See when polonium 84215 emits alpha particle. What do we do? Alpha is nothing but helium 24. So we get 82, nothing but lead. 8 to 211 is what is. Now look at the group number of polonium. Polonium belongs to 60A or 16th group. How about lead? Lead belongs to 4th A or 14th group. That means the product element or say the daughter element, whatever is formed will be Two groups left to that of the parent element. Two groups are left to that of the parent element. Okay. That is when alpha particle is emitted. Let's see what if a beta particle is emitted.
let us continue with that lead 80 to 211. You know, when this emits a beta particle, nothing but a fast moving electron, we get 83, nothing but bismuth, and the mass number is 211. Lead belongs to 40A. Bismuth belongs to 50. <coughs> that means the product element or say daughter element if it further disintegrates, product element will be one group right to the top the parent element okay that is very important atomic number increases by one obviously it will be one group right to the top of the parent element in case of alpha atomic number decreases by two units so obviously the product element will be two groups left to that of the parent element. Okay. So what if there is gamma emission? See, because the gamma emission does not decrease the atomic number, I mean, does not change the atomic number or mass number, there won't be any change in the position. No change in the position of the product element. See, even when uh, <coughs> one alpha and two beta particles are emitted in succession also. That means when isotopes are formed, no doubt there won't be any change in position. Okay. But there is an important information about the group displacement law. It is not observed, not followed. In case of some third B group element, okay, third B group. Let us take some examples and see. If you consider uranium 90 to 238, which belongs to third B group, of course it is an actinide. When this emits alpha particle, we get thorium 90 to 34, which also belongs to third B group, again an actinide. You know, Actinides belong to third B group, even lanthanides also. Actinides belong to seventh period, whereas lanthanides belong to sixth period. So if you consider this, suppose thorium belonging to third B group emits a beta particle, what do we get? 
we get protactinium 91 to 34 again belonging to third Bay group so there is no change in the group number okay but if suppose thorium belonging to third b if emits alpha then of course you will have change in the group isn't it there are certain exceptions you have to be little cautious Now the most important one. Calculation of the number of alpha and beta particles. See the number of alpha particles can be calculated using the formula delta A by 4, where delta A refers to the difference in mass number. Of the parent and the product. Of course, every time I need not say that the product may even be data. If it further disintegrates, we call it data. Right. So difference in mass number by four. Then coming to the number of beta particles. So this can be given as to alpha minus delta Z. 2 into the number of alpha particles minus delta Z. Nothing but the difference in atomic number of the product and parent element. Right. These are very important. Number of alpha particles is delta A by 4. Then the number of beta particles is 2 alpha minus delta Z. Now, radioactive disintegration theory. As discussed just now, supposing if we have started with a radioactive element, I mean with an element that has a unstable atomic nucleus. Say it disintegrates by some means, either by the emission of alpha or by beta or even by gamma, giving rise to a different element. Of course, called the product element. called daughter element if it further disintegrates. Now if suppose it disintegrates to form say Z. Now this is called product element. 
but of course daughter element if it further it isn't it so this is how the process goes on until and unless a stable nucleus is formed a particular element having a stable nucleus is formed continues until a non radioactive element with a stable nucleus is formed non radioactive in the sense the one that has a stable nucleus this goes on this way now the series of elements that are formed in this process is said to be a radioactive disintegration series now this is of course the series of elements formed in successive disintegration from a radioactive element with an unstable atomic nucleus till a non radioactive element with a stable nucleus is formed so there are uh, four different types of series four n four n plus one four n plus two four n plus three except four uh, n plus one the remaining all are natural radioactive disintegration series whereas 4n plus 1 is artificial natural in the sense they take place on their own artificial occur on bombardment okay coming to foreign series see it actually start to start with the uh, thorium 9232 and ends with the lead 82208 this is the starting element this is the end element that means non radio okay now check the number of alpha and beta particles emitted during this transition the number of alpha particle can be given as 232 minus 208 by 4 nothing but 6 the number of beta particle 2 alpha minus delta z force in this case it is 90 minus 82 so that gives rise to 4 12 minus 8 so you got 6 alpha particles and 4 beta particles the total number being 10 okay then it's 
4n plus 1. The 4n plus 1 starts with the plutonium 94 241 and ends with the bismuth 83 209. In this case, plutonium is the starting element. Bismuth is the end element. The number of alpha particles can be given as 241 minus 209 by 4. So that comes out to be 8. Then beta 2 into 8 minus half 94 minus 80. 16 minus 11. So that comes out to be 5. I have two more interesting point, points to say. Coming to this 4N series, you know it is also called thorium series because the starting element here is thorium but whereas when it comes to 4n plus 1 you know we call it neptunium series but why though the starting element is uh, Plutonium, we call it neptunium series because neptunium is the element with a maximum half-life. That means with maximum stability. Okay. So it's called neptunium series. One more thing, why is it a 4n and why the other one is 4n plus 1? You know, in this case, mass and number of the elements of this series is a divisible by 4. without any remainder, right? Check this out, 4 Pfizer, <coughs> and 4 Asia, Pfizer 2. In this case, the remainder will be 1. Divisible by 4 with a remainder of 1. Four six the four sixty two four remainder is one. Here it is four five the four remainder is one. So this is about uh, four n plus one. Coming to 4n plus 2 series. So it is called uranium series. The starting element here is uranium 92 to 38. And the end element is lead 82 to not 6.
coming to the number of alpha particles. 238 minus 206 by 4. Again, 8. The number of beta particles. 2 into 8 minus of 92 minus 80. This is 16 minus 10. Six. Look at this. You got a total of 14 particles emitted. The maximum. Among all the seeds. And no doubt here the starting element is uranium and is named after uranium only. Coming to the remainder part. Here the remainder is. Okay, and finally, 4n plus 3. See, it is called actinium series, but starts with the uranium 92 to 35 and ends with lead 82 to not 7. Coming to the number of alpha particles, it is a 7, then the beta particles can be given as 4. Here the remainder is 3. And see, it is named after actinium because actinium is the element with the Maximum half life. Okay. 